Welcome to Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. Coach Randy Taylor is bringing his 40 plus years of knowledge to you. This is Taylor Scouting. And now here's Coach Randy Taylor. All right, so this is Coach Randy Taylor for the Taylor Scouting Podcast. And you know, they call me Coach Taylor. We're here on the Up On Game Network, which is available on iHeartRadio and any other uh, uh, any other spot you get your podcasts, and on YouTube on the Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. So follow us, folks. Uh, follow us on Up On Game Network and me at our Taylor FB Scout on Twitter. So I'm really happy to introduce a, a, a really great young lady I've known for years, Tiffany Menzioni. Hello. Now this, this pod, hello, Tiffany, great to see you. And I'm, I'll explain the reason this, this podcast is about a women's journey, a woman's journey to be a successful athlete and how women can translate that into the sports field as a profession. And it's really a crossover topic because we can learn from everyone's success, right? So welcome Tiff, as I call her. I think she's been a pioneer in many ways in this sports industry. She grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. She was a figure skater and a cheerleader. And, and she came from a huge hockey family, so they're always on the ice. Uh, sports is in her blood. Uh, you know, you'd have to say that. So, but then here's the thing about her. She has done a lot of great things in her life. For four years, she was on the U.S. Synchronized, synchronized Skating Team. That's easy to say. How old were you, Tiffany? <laughs> Welcome. Hello. How old were you when you did the, uh, had that journey? young? Uh, well, I won my first nationals when I was 13 in 97. And then the, that was at the novice level, and then the second time in 01 at the junior level. So I was like 17. Tiffany, give us a little introduction of your, uh, you can introduce your dog, George. Just give us your background growing up in Chicago. Well, I uh, here's George. Hey, George. <laughs> he, uh, he, sorry, he's getting a little fidgety. Um, well, I grew up in Chicago, uh, I was a figure skater and cheerleader, as you had mentioned. Skating took up much of my time. Um, and cheerleading was just kind of something I got to do extra yeah. because I wanted to feel like part of our high school and, and things of that nature. How, what um, high school? Down or south, go Mustangs. <laughs> go Mustangs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of work. Um, usually getting up around 3.45 in the morning, going to uh, the rink around 4.35, skating in the morning, going to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go to cheerleading and then back to skating. And then on Monday and Wednesday, I would just go straight to skating. And Saturday and Sundays, I'd skate like eight hours a day. <laughs> you, you know, that leads me into uh, what I wanted to talk about. To, to be a champion in anything requires hard work, discipline and talent and, and, and a lot of stuff. And we all talk about those different uh, qualities. Talk about the process for you to be a champion in your sport, Tiff. Yeah, I think, you know, looking back on it, um, you miss out on a lot of things, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But when other kids are getting ready to go to prom and homecoming, you're maybe traveling the country or, or going out of country for competitions. Um, like I said, getting up at 345 in the morning didn't really leave me time for going out um, on the weekends. And being at the rink all day, I mean, literally, it was like a full time job. What was a week like for you? Kind of start out uh we'll we'll start with monday and we'll leave the weekend because it's unique so give me give me a monday through sunday of your week as a champion like my schedule yeah just how oh. what did it take for you to uh, get there just the important parts of your efforts every day i know 345 in yeah, the morning getting up in the thing. morning you have to be disciplined i um also had to do a lot of kind of uh teaching myself of like almost homeschooling because you know I was missing so much school from traveling that you have to make sure you're on top of things because my parents are very big on grades and so if you didn't have any good grades then it didn't matter we weren't doing anything so um it, it was just a lot of time management 
um, and making sure that I had everything done. And you know, I was young then, so I had a lot of energy. <laughs> I don't think I could do it now. Is this a grueling sport? I mean, is the practices, are they, what's the, the level of toughness that you, that it, you have to go through or, or whatever the words I'm looking for? How, how is that? Was it a tough sport? Um, on your body, not like, you know, not physically, you know, we weren't hitting anyone, <laughs> not like football, but um, mentally and um, emotionally it was. Is there, there's a, a got to be some kind of a flexibility part of this sport. Uh, I'm, you know, it sounds to me like it's a beautiful thing to watch, but all of these sports, you know, and we see things like this in the Olympics and, and in uh, international uh, sports, it, it there's got to be the, uh, the parts where there's the grind. Yeah. Well, yeah, and those are those 345 uh, wake-up calls, being at the rink all day, like weekends, I said, eight hours a day, and then, you know, you're missing out on things, but at the end of the day, it was worth it. Is there a uh, weightlifting or a strength component of the sport? Yeah, I, there was some strength and conditioning, um, just because... I was skating, so you need, you know, your leg muscles and everything. Um, and I, I did have a trainer, um, and I would see him, I think, on Saturdays and Sundays, Dr. Kevorkian, we called him. Dr. Kevorkian, <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> you survived that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that a girl. Hey, hey, so, okay, so you hang up your skates, you attend Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida, majoring in, in sports marketing, after graduating in 2006, she in, interned at, and worked at an interactive marketing agency that worked with USC, Ohio State, and several other teams. So what, what was that? What were some of your roles there? Uh, so I started off there as an intern, and then they hired me full time. Um, but I was just kind of working, managing their projects. So it was uh, one particular company that we were working with. And so it was setting up events for them um, at the USC and Ohio State games and then getting people to come and sign up um, for, it was supposed to be like a Facebook. It's no longer around. Okay, but it was it was uh, prior to Facebook and you it were- It was right around when Facebook was coming out. So it, it, it had the opportunity to either really skyrocket or not. <laughs> and, and so is it safe to say you then went on to create Facebook? Yeah, yeah I wish. Is that... <laughs> I wish. Yeah, unfortunately, Wait, hey. this app didn't, uh, it, it was around for a few years and it, it, it didn't quite take off like Facebook did. I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. You're still, you overcame it. The uh, When was it that we first worked together? I was just thinking about that. I, it had to have been in 08 or 09. Yeah, I, many moons ago. And, and that was when uh, you were you were working with a whole bunch of us, uh, former coaches, players, professional athletes. Tell us about that role. It was a recruiting firm. Yeah, so um, they hired me on as sales, um, but I'm not much of a sales person, and I'm more into the PR marketing media. So I remember asking if I could try and do something with our players and our coaches because we really didn't do anything to promote them or promote the events that we were doing. And they wanted me just to focus on the sales job, but I don't like to take no for an answer. So <laughs> I was like, well, let me, I'll figure it out. I'll just do it. And then that turned into or having a whole department yeah and and you had so who were some of the other guys that uh you recall we because we had some really good former players and, and doug great Plank speakers. doug Plank. And roman roman oban yeah cecil martin um oh tom um coughlin yeah he was there for a while um oh gosh oh mike tom zach yeah I'm trying to, boy, I haven't thought of some of these names some in a Some of long these time. names in, in quite a while, I know. But I'm, you are I'm, the most important, you and Tom Lemmy. Well, I appreciate that. We we did have kind of, we were kind of the uh, the football guys. And uh, I remember Tiffany helped us run this. Uh, we, we had a great all-star uh, event 
at Soldier Field in, in Chicago, oh, yeah. where we uh, hosted a bunch of the, the top players in the Chicago area and and uh, including we, we kind of found Jimmy Garoppolo back in those days. Uh, I, I'm Tiffany's probably taking credit for that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you so tell that story. <laughs> you tell that story. Yeah. Yeah. As you should. Now, now he's going to move to Las Vegas, right? Yeah. All right. Well, don't bother him. He's got I, things I to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Tiff, talk about the lessons learned, you know, and, and some of the benefits of your efforts uh, in some of these roles in, in and how it helps in the sports world. Because it's a different, it, it's like business. It's like a lot of things, but it is, is a little bit different. You know, I think I learned very good time management skills growing up and um, just how to deal with a lot of different people, especially traveling all over the country or meeting all sorts of different people, different personalities. So you get to you can figure out how to work with different people. Um, and then I think like the perseverance and just not taking no for an answer and just going, 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 even, you know, in skating, you fall, you get back up, you keep going in work something doesn't work out it's okay we figure out why and we move on is where the relationships you know we, recruiting is about relationships everything we do is about relationships talk about that in your pr and marketing world the importance of those relationships yeah well so it, uh, a lot of it and the reason why i was able to build such a great department um, was that my players always showed up on time and they were always prepared. And so there would be, you know, I, I, it's mind boggling to me, but there'd be people who just wouldn't show up for interviews or they would have no idea what the interview was about. The interviewer wouldn't know what they were supposed to be asking. So I made sure everybody was very, very well prepared. And then with keeping that relationship going, they knew that they can always come to me for anything um, and that my guys would be ready to go. And, and that that cut across every sport because you were dealing with not only football, but basketball, baseball, soccer, uh, a lot of the women's sports, women's softball and volleyball. Yeah. So is there a difference in a, in the coaches and the athletes in those sports or, or do they kind of all have the same drummer? At the end of the day, I guess they're all the same. I mean, you, you probably are going to uh, handle a family from Iowa a little bit different than a family from California. So, you know, but at the end of the day, everyone's going for the same goal. Did, are you a, were you a coach as well? I mean, did you have these people know everything about their sport, you know? Uh, uh, Sue Enquist knows everything there is uh, about her sport and you know what I mean and, and so but but you still have to coach those people to do what we you needed them to do H how do you do that um well as far as like when we would go to different um, combines and stuff I would just make sure that I researched all the schools and the the players in that area so that when I did go talk to parents or media I would know what I was talking about or at least sounded like I did. <laughs> sounded like yeah. you were always, you made us all feel like we had the answers. We were all yeah. confident. You well, instilled... I think that's what helped too is, is and you know, there were um, many uh, radio guys too that loved having you on because you like to sing country music. Well, I always would, <laughs> you know, give a, uh, a, a proud to be an Oki from Muskogee <laughs> when there was an opportunity. But um <laughs> we'll we'll save that for a different day, and I appreciate you bringing that up too. <laughs> hey, so then, uh, then you go on to work for Dan Patrick and yep. and the Dan Patrick Show. How, how did that come about? Where was that in all of the steps? So um, after I left the recruiting place, uh, I it was time to move on and move forward and move up, and so I got the opportunity with Dan. Um, the gentleman who actually started the show lived in Chicago. Um, so that's where, that's how I got to be in Chicago and work there. Um, and then I ended up moving to LA because we started um, another show. And so the Dan Patrick show, talk about that process, because again, it's a, it's a high energy, 
uh, a lot of information flowing at, at, at the same time and a lot of pressure, I think. Yeah, I, I think my one thing that I learned during that time is it's live TV. <laughs> And so if you, cause I would write some of their script too. Um, and I, a few times ha had the wrong day down <laughs> and when it's live TV, that doesn't work. So, um, with that, I had to be very disciplined. That was a, a lesson I learned very, very quickly. Um, but those guys were great and I missed working with them. <laughs> we, you know, we uh, that's called learning from your failure, right? You, you, yeah. Those are the that's what we always learn the most from. And, and when I've had every guest on, that's part of that discussion has always been, you, what have you learned the most from? And a lot of times it's from the failure, yes. and you, you learn it from all of, all of that. And so, and then from Dan Patrick now. Uh, you you had an opportunity to somehow be involved or get to know Rich Eisen and that group and help them get started? Yeah, so we all kind of became the same group. Um, but I started working on the Dan Patrick show. Uh, Chris Crane, who's the gentleman who um, started that show, came up with this idea to do a show with Rich Eisen. Um, and they were both under the DirecTV, now AT&T umbrella. Um, so Rich was going to film out in L.A. and then Dan out in New York, Connecticut. So I got to move to L.A. <laughs> and you got to move to L.A. And, and and so tell me the difference between. So we we know the difference between, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever, you know, this coach and that coach or this player and that player. So uh, let's go. Let's let's talk. Let's get a little nitty gritty here. What's the difference between Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen? Oh, gosh. Uh Without Rich getting more, in trouble, without Rich getting is in more trouble, like a sushi and wine, and Dan is like beer and wings. <laughs> I bet you they would like that description. Yeah, that. <laughs> well, they're both so awesome to work for, and they both treated me very, very well. So I was very lucky. Well, you know what's kind of nice is you have been involved in a lot of different things, and uh, I really think that uh, we've had a women's clinic on where we've had women who came on and, and asked questions and, and I was able to, to try to answer them as, as well as we could. And what I always think is that, like I said, that it's really a crossover topic uh, between with men and women in, in sports, I think, because uh, it's all about success and learning from everyone's success and, and how to work hard and how to be disciplined and all of those different kind of things. And, and you, you have taken those and have really done a great job working under a lot of high pressure situations. And that's why I wanted to have you on because you uh, are somebody that's been behind the scenes, but has been so important to the success of some of these big name organizations and, and programs and, and those 45 or so former <laughs> players and athletes that you, uh, you helped. So uh, I really wanted to get, get your story out there, uh, meet George and have an opportunity <laughs> to, uh, to get you on to talk and, and, and help our fans and our people that watch uh, know that there's an opportunity for women, especially to, uh, work in sports, to be athletes, to work in sports, to have the same uh, work ethic, the same drive, the same passion, all of those things that you have to have to be an athlete, and then have the ability to turn that into a career, yep. which you have. And, and so, I, you know, I'm proud of you for that. And, and you've you. done a, a lot of great work. Now, you do have another passion, Yes. <laughs> and, and that is makeup, which is something I really don't know anything about, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, so so now you're working with Miguel Julio Beauty Team. So what the heck is that? Yeah, so he's the official uh, beauty team of the Raiderettes. So I'm out here in Las Vegas now. Uh, so I'll be doing makeup on those girls on Sundays. Uh, and then the Super Bowl's out here next year, too, so. So now if I come out and I do like a, well, I could I do the one do? thing that needed to possibly be done to you. you just oh my so goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have you on the show. TFA, I really love it. I, we're going to be in Las Vegas soon. 
I want to thank you for jumping on with us. Uh, Tiffany Menzioni, athlete, uh, career sports uh, woman, professional, and someone that I have a lot of respect for and has done a lot of great things. So appreciate you, Tiff. It, it's time for me to uh, do a little of the business stuff here and close out the show. I uh, want to thank everyone for listening and watching. Remind people to subscribe to Up On Game Presents on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Rate and review our podcast, please. We need that. Follow us on all our social platforms by searching Up On Game Network, and you can find me and, and uh, reach out to me at our Taylor FB Scout on Twitter. Watch full episodes of the show Taylor Scouting on the Up On Game Network YouTube channel. Just search Up On Game Network. We are not giving out any contact information on Tiffany. So uh, unless she wants us to later. Anyway, so I <laughs> want to thank you, young lady, for being on with us. Thank uh, you. And Randy, I want to thank you for all of your support that you've given me throughout the years. I know that I said it before, but if it weren't for you, I don't think I would have ever gotten to where I where I am. Well, I sure appreciate that. That's nice of you to say. You, you know, I think as the older I get, the more I have been involved with a lot of beautiful, great, talented young people like you and some of the others that we've had on this show. So thank you so much, Tiff, and appreciate you coming on and talking about your journey. Thank you.